Welcome! This will be part 3 of 4 to our intro to VBA series. During the next few minutes, we'll be going over conditional and logical operators. Conditional operators compare two values together and determines if a statement is true or not. If you look at the first table to the left, this one where it says conditional operators, you will recognize essentially normal math operators such as equal to, less than, greater than, greater or equal to, less than or equal to, and does not equal. The table after that are logical operators, which alone do not do anything, but you're, you can combine multiple conditional operators in that AND only works if all arguments are true, to be true, to return true, OR is as long as one argument is true, then OR will return true. ZOR is only one argument can be true to return true. If we want to use it as an example, AND would be something like 10 is greater than 5, AND 5 is greater than 0. Only in this way will AND return true. OR is 10 is greater than 5, OR 5 is less than 0. 5 is less than 0 is obviously false, but 10 is greater than 5 is true. So because one of them is true, it still returns true. ZOR is if one of them is true, it'll only return true. But let's say with the same case as AND, 10 is greater than 5, and 5 is greater than 0. Because both of them are true, ZOR returns false. These operators are very important for if statements. This gives VBA the power to do something similar to a decision tree, wherein you can direct the code to go in a given path depending on conditions that you set. The basic syntax looks like this. So first we would have if whatever the condition is, then... Actually, since we can't go any further than that without causing an error, let's do if 10 is greater than 5, which in this case is a condition, then tells it what to do when 10 is greater than 5, or if we want to add what happens if it's false, you would put else and if. So this area is message box what happens when true, and this area message box is what happens when false. So if we play this right now, we'll see that because 10 is greater than 5, this happens when it's, it will automatically flow to the true side. But if I change the sign, now it will flow to the false side. We can do much more to this, like if 10 is greater than 5 and 5 is greater than 0. So 10 is less than 5 is false, but 5 greater than 0 is true. But because we have an and, it will return false. This is going to be very useful when you go through, especially conditions where you have to say, oh, if my numbers are, let's say, over a materiality point, to highlight those. That could be a real example you could use it for. Okay, so let's use what we've learned so far to go to slightly a, a bit more of a slightly difficult example. We're going to input a birthday and have Excel tell us whether this person is allowed into a casino or not. So they have to be over 18 essentially. So the first things first things first, let's denote a date cell to input. Let's say dim birthday as date because we're going to recognize this as a date. Cells 820 or row 20 columns 1 is equivalent, or birthday is equivalent to the cell. And now we have the input. So at the very least, let's put in uh, today's date to make it so that it can check users. Let's put May 25th, 19. Next we're going to denote the actual date. So we're going to denote the birthday year as an integer, dim the birthday month as integer, and dim the birthday day as integer. What we're going to do now is figure out what those integers are. So we're going to say birthday year is equal to birthday, or year is a function that you can use in VBA, and it gives you a year as a number, and the date's going to be birthday. 
birthday month is equal to month is also a function of your birthday. And birthday day is equal to day birthday. And all these give you integer values. So what's going to happen is, the very first thing is we know that if there's a if the years are different by at least 19, there's no way you're going to be under 18. So that's going to be our first check. So what we're going to have is an if statement. If today's date as a year, so if year of date, date returns today's date, is less than, sorry, minus the birthday year, is greater than or equal to 19, so that means there's a difference of at least 19 years, then this is true, we can welcome these people. Welcome. But if this is false, then we have to check something else. So if the year of today, sorry, we're going to add more conditions, and to that it's else if. How we went through whether you want to add just a true or false, then it'd be if something then is the true, else is if it's false. But if we wanted to add more statements to it, you would use else if. Else if year date minus birthday year is now equal to 18. We know that only when they're equal to 18 do we have to check up or down because it could be that they're 18 or they're 17. If the year date minus the birthday year is 18, and the birth month, or today's month minus the birth month is greater than zero, we know that their birthday has passed. So if month of today's date minus birthday month is greater than zero, then they also pass. So message box, welcome. Now what happens if the birth month is equivalent to zero? Now this is going to be another condition we have to check. So same condition as before. So their birthdays have to be 18. Birthday difference between the year has to be 18. The difference in the month has to be equal to zero. And the difference of the day, month, or day of date minus birthday day must be greater than or equal to zero. Because what this means is if it's zero, today's the birthday, and if it's greater than or, e or if it's greater than, that means the, the day has passed. Then these people are also welcome. Now else, everybody else fails. Come back later. So, let's test out how this works. We have, this date's obviously going to fail, so let's give it a quick check first. Oh, whoops. We forgot the end if. End if. See? 525-2019, come back later. We know that for a fact. So let's try 525-2000, because that's at the cusp of 18 years old. Or it would be 2001. Now we go here. Welcome. So today is, for me, it would be May 26th, and that's past May 25th, which means this person would be 18. So they're welcome. Let's check May 26th. These are also welcome, but the moment we put May 27th, they're no longer welcome. And then we can just try something else. Let's say May 26th of 1990, and these people are welcome. So the reason why I set it up like this is because we you also have to see what answer you're looking for. If we're looking for a specific age and not just a true or false whether they're allowed in, then our macro would change a little bit because we would have to add conditions for subtracting certain things. But because I know that we're only looking for a true or false, then it doesn't really matter and we can just cut out as many people as possible for every stage of the if statement. That's why at this point in time, greater than or equal to 19, the, these people don't have to be checked. And everything else, the year has to be equal to 18, or there are no. it's a given that they're under 18. And then the other conditions are just for the one-offs that fall into each situation.